Yeah. Aloha, welcome to Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist right here in Honolulu. And today I am excited because I have as my guests once again Judith Shivani Davis and Paul Lito McCurdy. And if you don't remember, they are teachers of Tantra, sacred sexuality, intimacy for men and women and they're here to talk about the meetup group that's an ongoing thing here the weekend training coming up in october for couples and singles and upcoming day-long and residential workshops on maui and on oahu welcome back judith thanks very welcome much welcome back paul oh, thank you thanks for, thanks for having us so you guys have been doing this now here in hawaii for Oh. Almost a couple of years. Oh well, yeah, we're getting on to a year and a half, two years now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Actually, I started two and a half years ago, um, and Judith joined me in uh, January 2016. To so. do our, our, oh, that's right, it was a January. Yeah. This is our third intro weekend together. Wow. And yeah. we, we've also had one inter, um, uh, intermediate. Inter, intermediate. So, uh -huh. so we've done beginner's level three times, two times we're doing a third, we've done one more advanced level, uh, which everyone who goes through the beginner's weekend would like to have happen right away, but we need to uh -huh. do a couple of the beginners in order to build momentum for that. But the community is really coming along and growing, and Paul's doing a great job on the um, bi-monthly. Is that well, I have a meetup group, that, and, and those classes and those those meetings are free, uh -huh. uh, and they meet every uh, two weeks or so, depending on my travel schedule. And that's been the challenge this past mm -hmm. year that I've been traveling a lot, uh -huh. and so it can't be that consistent. But my traveling is kind of wrapping up in the end of August and September, and so we'll have another a whole series, uh, usually about a block of eight meetings. What happens at the meetup groups? Uh, the typical, it's only a two hour meeting, usually in the evening, seven to nine p.m. And it's a place where people can just learn a little bit about some of the energetic practices of Tantra. Uh, I usually run it according to the chakra system uh -huh. uh, so that, you know, we can just kind of go down the, the path and give them an, a, a sample of what what kind of practices are involved and, and give them a, a really safe place to, to experience it. Mm -hmm. And it's just a ton of fun. I mean, usually after nine o'clock, uh, it, nobody wants to leave. And we have to, you know, it's a work night and we gotta kinda, okay, gotta go. And, <laughs> cause it, and, it, and it's building a really nice community. And that's what's really fun. So to the uninitiated who may have just heard the word Tantra mm -hmm. and sexuality, and everybody's heard that word, I hope. Right. Um, I'm afraid that the listeners are going to think, oh, so like everybody gets naked and has sex at the meetup groups? <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. This is all clothes on work, very safe, super, uh, I want to say almost conservative. We talk about breath and communication skills and consciousness, uh, mm -hmm. you know, putting our thought to uh, what we're doing about our sexuality and our intimacy rather than just winging it and fumbling through it. Uh -huh. um, so it's more of a, uh, a focus that, that we're trying to teach the men and the women to, to bring together. Is there a difference between the kinds of questions that men and women ask at the meetup groups? I don't think so. I think that they seem to be pretty consistent. Uh -huh. uh, you know, amongst men and women, they have the same same kind of questions about it because it is. Most times, it, it, there's about half the people have never been to a meetup before, right. and then there's a group that comes to all of them, and they because yeah. once once they come, they, they want to keep going, and they go, oh, this is great, and they come back, yeah. and and I mean I have a fairly small space that only holds 20 25 people, and we're getting. 25 people reserved for the meetups, plus 10 on the wait list almost every time now. Wow. So it's, you know, the, and I tell the people that have been there, don't bother to RSVP and take up the space on the RSVP list, just come. Uh -huh. Because enough people who RSVP don't show up. 
you know, they just don't show up for, you know, life gets in the way. Right, right. And, 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 and so there's always little room. And if by yeah. chance everyone were to come, well, we'd just fit in, you know, we'd yeah. make room and make space and it would be fun. So, so people who've never been, how would they find out, how would they find your meetup group? Meetup.com, mm -hmm. Tantra Yoga Oahu. It's simple. Yeah, okay. and just type that in and it'll pop right up and, and they're all on their schedule. Okay. So. So, Judith, you had also mentioned to me that one of the things you'd like to talk about are uh, groups that you're going to have um, specifically for men and specifically yeah. for women. Yeah. Oh, why separate it like that? You know, it's a really fun, safe way to try out some of your thought forms, possibly negative thought forms. Mm. If you want to kind of take a poll of the rest, the rest of the women. Do you find this to be true when? Mm. And what do you do if? And this is a much better, uh, when it's all women, uh -huh. they're much more likely to uh, get together and tell the truth to each other and reveal what they're secure about, what they're insecure about. Um, one of the things I really want to do with this idea is teach have a woman's day-long workshop with a particular topic and then use Paul to come in for an hour at uh, some point to be so uh, like ask a man a question. Ask a man a question sort of thing. <laughs> and I will do the same for him when he does a men's group. So the women so the men have a chance to ask a real life woman, is this really true? Because I've always thought that. And what we're learning is that that is, uh, people respond really well to mm -hmm. it. It's like, I love that idea. It's like yeah. training wheels. Yeah. Um, because then the, uh, another exercise that we lead up to when we do more advanced co-ed groups is something we call the fishbowl, where um, a group of wom women sit in the middle and they have a, a woman's group. And the men are quiet and to just observing on the outside. And um, they don't get to talk. You put duct tape on. <laughs> <laughs> the duct tape is for the women when we switch. Oh, the men rarely need duct tape. Oh, really? Tape. We don't really use duct tape. <laughs> but the women are more likely to um, um. want to add, com yeah. com want to comment. You know, uh -huh. when, so when the men are talking. When the men are talking. Yeah. It's an extreme Because honor. the men have it so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> men are always needing improvement. <laughs> In fact, that's one of the interesting things that I've been studying this year is uh, the, the, the Alison Armstrong belief that um, women spend a lot of time trying to get their men to be well-behaved women. That's what the, they think the improvement should look like instead of actually finding out what is more likely natural for a man, what is a more natural behavior for a man. It doesn't look like a well-behaved woman, even though we'd like that to be true. I think that's some of men's fears. Because we've been hanging it on them for so long. If we, if we you know, put a little effort into finding out what really is the way a man thinks mm. um, and learn how to communicate to that, then we'll be much more successful with um, encouraging the man to actually be the man of our dreams. You know, that brings to mind, I, I work with a couple, and uh, in their last session, the guy was pretty angry, and w one of the things he said was, um, and I, I'm not making this up, he really said, you know what the trouble is? She wants to wear the pants in the family. Mm -hmm. mm. And you know, the feminist in me was very offended. <laughs> uh, so I didn't say anything. I just listened and tried to get yeah. them both to talk some more about what that means. And did you find anything out about that? Or, because what, what I hear is there's a disparity between the masculine and the feminine. Talk more. And, <laughs> and, and you know, each of us has a masculine and feminine energies. And you need polarity in the relationship and this can flux, it can change moment to moment, but it always has to be polarity. But it's just like two magnets. If you turn, put the two positive ends together, they repel each other, right. right? It's the same thing in a relationship. So if, if she's bringing her masculine energy, the, wearing the pants in the family right. constantly to him, it forces him to be in his feminine. 
Well, he doesn't like going there. Well, that, that, that's exactly the point. Right. He doesn't like going there. So they're, they're always in conflict because he's trying to, he has to then step up his masculine even more to right. overpower her, right. and then it's battle. Right. A woman will and never really win that, the man up battle. Yeah. Uh -huh. They'll never really win. Right. They just create conflict. A, a dear friend of mine, Helena Summer, uh, says, when a woman womans up, a man will man up. So what does that mean? Uh, that means that she creates that feminine polarity. When mm. she when she turns on her feminine, the man will respond to it. It's much more powerful, in my opinion, for a woman to ask for what she wants or from the feminine perspective. Because what men want to provide, men want to help. We want to support the woman. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I want to do. I want to be there. Right. But if I'm getting fought about it, I'm getting thumped about it, right. I'm, I'm going to resist. Yeah. But if I'm asked from a feminine perspective, I'm going to want to do it, whatever that might be. This is an energy. Yeah. So, I mean, this yeah. is, and this is the bridge to Tantra because what we're talking about is the energy of masculine and feminine. Now, it's not so that there's no, no good time for the men and women to neutralize each other when you're in, it, let's say you're in the kitchen really wanting to cook together. Right. You both want to be in more of a neutralized place because you're cooperating and doing things together. Right. You know, and that's... Very difficult for some couples be, <laughs> to cook yeah. in the kitchen together. For <laughs> some couples, it's better to create the role. Which yeah. one of us is in charge and which one of us is not. Right. And that's a better, a better way for some people. But yeah. maybe when you're... There are activities where it's really great to neutralize each other. It's very relaxing. Some people spend their entire relationship life in that relaxed place. Wait, what does that mean to neutralize each that other? That means it's relaxing, there's not a lot of charge, there might not be a lot of sexual energy, but there's right. a lot of contentment. Right, you right. Know? And we're it, cooking. We're cooking, although <laughs> honestly that's not always the most peaceful, peaceful place to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> Too many shop options. <laughs> All right, so, but the, the point I'm trying to make is learning what the natural state of a man's energy is and the natural state of a woman's energy is, is a lot what we do in Tantra. Mm. We don't, it's not, and it's not man-woman, it's positive-negative. Because we each Energy. have that. We, we, so we, we each have both. We each, we have, each both. have both. Yeah. Right. But I'm more, I'm more likely to be more comfortable in the negative energy of the feminine. Mm -hmm. The man is more likely going to be more comfortable in the positive energy of the masculine. Mm -hmm. So when we bring these ideas into our body and try to learn from the energy of it, I'm going to be a happier person if I can come um, from my feminine energy in my body, not my mind. You know, so... Right, but so many of us are not in our bodies. <laughs> and that's what Tantra does. Yeah. We put them, in, you know, so another thing to tell your couple mm. who are like this right. is yab yum. Remember what yab yum is? You sit, you sit in... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. basically, if you put your bodies together and breathe, the, just sitting together, this is, we could call this putting your bodies together uh -huh, uh -huh. and breathe the energy will take you to an, a natural place. The body will do it by themselves. Right. Now, the resistance is Without usually... Without thinking about it. <laughs> the resistance is usually, I don't want to. I don't right. feel like it. Right, right. Yeah. Well, that's exactly when you say... I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to exactly. do it. Exactly. And it will, um, you know, it, will, it will correct itself where it needs to be. Well... I'm going to take this opportunity. I don't want to, but we need to go to a break. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll be right back with more Shrink Wrap Hawaii. Don't touch your mouse. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week, helping us to explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch. Hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement, raising public awareness on tech, 
energy, diversification, and globalism. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Welcome back to Shrink Rep. I'm still with Shivani and Paul. And uh, you were just talking about Yab Yum, which I remember a little bit, and doing things even when you don't feel like it. But in order to do these things, you need to have some skills. So mm -hmm. how do you learn these skills? There needs to be a willingness to um, to learn something new and in the beginning usually scary. That's why we do the intro weekends, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, and my meetups. And the meetups. They give, they give people a chance to sample and see what other kind mm -hmm. of people are in the, in the same situation or exploring the same topic. We yeah, I don't think they can emphasize enough mm -hmm. how safe it is because the first, I went to, before I did the weekend workshop, mm -hmm. um, I went to the sampler that evening, sometime mm -hmm. before that, mm -hmm. with a couple who was, were in my practice. And they, they didn't do the workshop, I never knew why. But months and months later, another therapist I know who works with them said, oh yeah, they didn't go to that. I said, why? And they said, well, because you know, it was all about switching partners and having sex. And I, I was like shocked. I had the same look you just what? gave me. It's like, no. <laughs> they specifically said no. Like, you know, there's homework, but there's none of that. You know, it's all with your clothes on, completely safe. Nobody is asked to do anything sexual in, you know. Oh. Yeah, so I just, I think, I wanted to emphasize that. You know, I really want to speak to that because a lot of times couples who are just peeking their head out of whatever cloistered place that they've become so uncomfortable in, um, they're really shy about revealing some of the reasons they're there or why right. they've been referred. And yeah. they don't they don't have a way to imagine safely that other people are going to be in the room talking about some of the same things that they're going through. And that is definitely a hurdle that they have to get over. That they that I mean, we see this every yeah, time. And, 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 and at the start of each one of my meetups, the first thing we talk about is confidentiality. Mm -hmm. And that anything that is spoken in that, in that meeting stays in that meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you're only allowed to talk about your experience and not about anybody else. And that you know, it's total acceptance and compassion without judgment. So that any question is, is acceptable. And it gives people the, the permission to to ask a question and, yeah. and explore things on a topic that our culture typically is afraid or ashamed of doing. People are terrified of But when you think yeah. about the level of discomfort that yeah. grows in an environment where things are secret and unspoken, right. you know, that's a really hard place to get over. And so here they are, they have trouble, they've gotten their themselves to therapist and then somebody suggests they do some sort of group they can barely go to the therapist together and tell each other the truth if they could tell each other the truth they probably wouldn't need they wouldn't therapist. need me yeah, right. Right. <laughs> so, and, and that is one of the things that needs to be so carefully handheld um, yeah. for for people they need to Amira needs to go up and say what's the scariest thing that can happen and, and what will I learn about you? Yeah. They feel somehow that they're, it's a betrayal. Because I've been working with a men's group for six years. And if I ask these guys what goes on in the bedroom with their wives, that, oh, that, that would be unfaithful to talk about. Hmm. Well, for That's me, a belief people I have. I know. Right? And if it right. was my group, I would say, oh, so it must be going really well. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But you, and I want to throw one, one thing in there. You know, you were talking the permission. You know, intimacy isn't necessarily about physical practice. Uh -huh. It's about vulnerability right. and speaking your truth. That's what really brings people. Oh, I think that's why it's that's scary. Why, oh, absolutely, it's scary. <laughs> yeah, but it's so I mean, I, my point is that people think that you hear the word tantra and they think it's going to be all about physical practice and sex or something, mm. and it's not. It's a, it's a lot to do with just the communication skill and giving yourself permission to speak to things that you've been afraid to talk about. See, but there's the paradox because on the one hand, I hear a guy saying, "Oh, it's not all about just sex. Oh, I don't need to." Communications, now I can read about it. <laughs> but then the other side, like you say, is terrified yeah. to talk about it. Well, you can read about it, <laughs> but that doesn't mean you're going to go do it. 
And so here we get to go into class where we practice. It will give you specific techniques of how do you actually talk about this subject, or how do you actually come to somebody and say, let's sit down and talk about X, whatever mm -hmm. it is, that's in a safe way to do it. And there's structure to that process. Mm -hmm. And we'll give them that in the, in the meetups. And, and give them, give them a chance to practice it. And, it's, and again, you only can re need to reveal what you're comfortable revealing. You don't have to speak right. your deepest hidden truths, right. but you know, it gives you the, it starts to exercise that muscle, and, and it, it needs practice. And when you see other people do it, you right. get a little emboldened. By oh, sure, and yeah, yeah I find, I, that's why I love groups, yeah. is because you could stay safe and listen to other people, and this little light bulb goes off. Mm -hmm. Wow, they that that's me. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, right. they're, they're doing their learning for you. And you're, yeah. you're, you're both sh sharing the same experience, what resonates. It's great mirrors. Um, yeah, they're doing your work. A lot of shadow in there that gets revealed. So, just to move a little bit, because I know I'm trying not to leave to too many things. Um, we were talking before uh, about the difference in over time in people's sexuality and mm -hmm. sensuality. Mm -hmm. um, what is that like for men and women as they get older? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that's like is their brain changes and their hormone um, profile changes. And so you can, you can establish an idea about what your sex life should be out of your 20s and your 30s. And here comes your 40s and your 50s. And and it's not the same thing, and so you're you're in you're kind of in conflict with yourself. You're in a, you're in the past remembering, and you're not really being present for the um, expanded capacity that your heart has as you age, as opposed to your lower chakras, which is all about action and power and passion. You know, we we learn as we get older how profoundly important connection is, you see You see me pointing up here, connection is versus what we're doing with our bodies together. Mm. We, we mature and we get better skills and re relationships become deeper and more profound. And so as you age and you go to something like a meetup group, you look around and you realize, wow, I'm not the only one who's changing. Mm -hmm. It's a different world out here. And they meet their tribe, hopefully. And in the, in the meetup I'm having people in their 20s to their 70s. Mm. And it's really, really interesting to see how so much overlap there is amongst everybody. Uh, oh, so you're saying, and, and you're seeing more similarities than differences? Well, there's differences, but there, yeah. you know, but there are similarities, and mm -hmm. some of the same issues arise uh, with relationship issues. Uh, and then each of them gets to see that, you know, the young people go, you hear what these 70 year old people are doing, they're like, Wow! <laughs> really? It's like, oh boy! You know, I mean, uh -huh. I can keep doing. You know, I can. This is this is what I look forward to. Yeah. And and then there's so there's there's a lot of, of learning that goes on yeah. amongst the age groups. It's it's a beautiful thing, you know. It's like a village. It's like all of a sudden yeah. you're creating this village. When did when did twenty somethings have a chance to uh, you know ask a sixty year old who's not their mother <laughs> something? And they don't really want to know their mother's answer to certain right. questions. They right. want to meet other people. You know, yeah. it's really a beautiful thing. Yeah. So that's what these, you know, these groups, what I'm finding so satisfying is the, the commonality leads to a mutual learning mm -hmm. um, for each other. We're going to be having um, preview nights, which actually give an example um, of what the weekend is going to be like and why, who would it be for and what is an example of some of the things we're going to do as, as when the summer's over, we're going to have those a little bit September. September, October. Yeah, maybe one in maybe one in August. That might no, probably September. Yeah, so where about? should people go to look for when that is? The meetup group. Yeah. yeah. Meetup group. Yeah, because we'll, okay. we'll I'll, I'll yeah. post them and. and, and you know, I'm so and proud of Paul for you know, being the rock for this meetup group. I mean, the group is really growing, and he's been so solid, and he's yeah. really a dependable resource for the kind of things we want to um, uh, bring with regularity. And that's totally free. And yeah. that's totally yeah. 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 So one of the things I asked you before is I, I, I mentioned to you that I'm getting some women in their 40s, 50s, 60s mm -hmm. who find themselves single after a long mm -hmm. time of being a couple and they have to go back into the dating world and 
they're complaining to me that guys just want to get in their pants. That's what they're interested in. Yeah. And, you know, I listen. And what would you say to these women? I have a new answer for that. <laughs> yeah. earlier, because Good. I do remember one thing. Um, there's nothing wrong with wanting to have sexuality in your life right. as you come out of a long-term relationship and you're in your 40s and 50s and 60s. So these men are not wrong. Mm -hmm. um, they're just afraid that that they're going to have to go back to the beginning like, like it's going to be like it was in their 20s and they had to work really hard. And now nowadays, um, mature women want to have a well-rounded relationship with a mature man. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get a little confused if a man leads with his sexuality. Uh -huh. They um, Just the way a woman needs to spend some time learning how a man's brain works, a man needs to remember that a woman is going to hear and see things really differently than him. Mm -hmm. So he's going to need to speak her language. And it's that same masculine-feminine polarity. Women connect in order to, before to have sex. Right. Men want to have sex right. in order to connect. Right. And women yeah. need to talk first, men can talk after. <laughs> right. right. It's, so that's the same, that same conflict. So I, for, from what my impression of that, you know, that answer is that I think women need to respect their boundaries and not jump into that pond so quickly. Women need to respect their own boundaries. Yes. Respect. If they're right. not comfortable having sex right away, right. don't do it. Right. Okay. Hold it back. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, and, and the, the women have the power. Right. They have the power. Thank you, but not now. And I'm honored that you would be interested. You know. Right. So. So the guy doesn't feel totally discarded. Right. right. He's not rejected. And he doesn't get hopeless. <laughs> right. It's never going to happen. Right. 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 So it's not all that different yeah. from being 17. <laughs> well, but we didn't know. Did you know that? Uh, well, you felt the rejection at 17. Now. Uh, my first girlfriend, I waited a year for her to say yes. Right. Good idea. Now, yeah. had you, <laughs> you know, You're watching this. <laughs> however, if you, if at 17, someone had given you a little handbook about um, uh, complimenting the way a woman looked, or how nice her perfume was, or. Um, how I mean, you don't think I was doing it? I, think I, I, I don't. Doing it. I don't know what you were doing, but I, I think there are fifty-year-olds. <laughs> Sorry. I think there are fifty-year-olds that don't do it. Yeah, they don't realize. Of guys out there. They right. don't realize that if they give the women a chance to lean into them a little bit, uh -huh. you know, then the women are going to feel a right. lot more safer. So it's a bit of a tango. Right. It is a little man leans it, it, back, the woman will come forward. Yeah, it's a little right. bit of a tango. It's also a little strategizing. Women are strategizing all the time. Men right. call that manipulation, and it isn't. Right. You don't believe me. I can no, I do. do it's, it's about feeling safe. I don't think that's a manipulation. It, it's to strategize. It's about letting trust grow. That's right. And that's so right. if a man, wouldn't it be great if a man came to a situation and said, you know, I, I'm not, uh, you know, as much as I really love having sex, I understand that that's really not what's going to be on the table right away. Right. Defuse. Right. You know, that right. disarms like, oh, okay. Right. But and if, she's and, and, thinking, oh. And if a, oh. man, if a man skedaddles off after hearing that, he wasn't the right guy. So they're telling me this is the time to wrap it up. Uh, as always, the half hour is just what. It does. And uh, thank you so much for coming on mm -hmm. the show. I really appreciate it. And. Um, so people go to meet up, and then they go to the Tantra Yoga Oahu. Tantra Yoga Oahu, and they'll right. find out about the October dates, right. and they'll find out about where to go for the meetups right. and all that and stuff. And all right. the new classes we're going to be having on Maui. Right. right. The new classes on Maui. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so Thanks much. Thanks again for coming. Yeah. Thanks for having us, Steve. Appreciate fun. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. And join us next time for Shrink Wrap. Aloha.